Hi everyone! I just wanted to get on here and share this week's beauty lessons. And I call them beauty lessons because it's what God is speaking to me or showing me. And God's beauty is the most beautiful. So um, that's why they're called beauty lessons. And God is beautiful. So the first thing is that I was praying last week and I was praying for power, more power in the Holy Spirit, more power to share the truth with boldness, more power um, to be his witness. In Acts, it says, Jesus says that you will receive power from on high in order to be my witnesses. So the reason we want more power is to be a better witness to Jesus Christ and to testify of him. So I was praying more for more power and often I want the power in order to speak the truth. But what God told me is that there is speak the truth and there is power in that there is power in speaking the truth so when you proclaim the truth and you share the truth boldly the power comes in that the power comes through that so i was wanting power in order to speak the truth and god said speak the truth and that is powerful uh so i was blessed by that and also something in regards to having faith and stepping out and just trusting that God will provide the power when you speak the truth is Psalm 81:10. It says, "Open wide your mouth and I will fill it." So God reminded me of that verse saying to me, "You know, trust me. Share the truth and I will fill your mouth with words." Because often I am hindered or resistant or hesitant because I think I won't know what to say or um, where to go in the conversation. And part of trusting God and being led by the Spirit is, is you just do the very next thing that He tells you, even if it's just walking up to a stranger and asking them a simple question or saying, Hi, um, has anyone ever told you about Jesus? And so the idea of having faith and believing that God will fill your mouth with words when you open your mouth to, to obey him and share with someone else, to share the truth. So I felt like God was reminding me of that, that he is the one who provides and he will provide all the words. Um, the next thing that I wanted to share is something that has been a long-term um, prayer of my heart, a long-term difficulty for me, a long-term strategy in my life, and that is waking up in the morning. Um, I, someone recently asked me, they said, are you a morning person? And I said, I am at heart. I'm a morning person at heart. Um, I really, really love having time in the morning. I have more fruitful days, productive days, more uh, peaceful days. I feel filled when I have time in the morning with the Lord, especially extra time when I feel like I can savor the time and relish in the time. And this always happens when I wake up early. Um, it seems like every time I get off of a fast, God blesses me with waking up early without any tiredness or any difficulty. It's always um, like in the 6 a.m., you know, 6 o'clock hour that God just blesses me with the ability to get up right after a fast for the first one or two days. Um, and so this happened and I woke up at 6.20 after going to bed at like 11 something. So normally I need eight hours. I got less than eight hours and I woke up full of energy and I had such a sweet and intimate time with the Lord and morning with the Lord. Um, and every time that happens, it's always like, I want more of this, God. I need more of this. This blesses my life. This um, makes me more fruitful. This makes me feel more at peace, more strong in you, more capable. It gives me more direction for the day because when I have time in the morning with the Lord, I and that doesn't feel rushed or cramped or squeezed in. I can... Um, give space for God to speak to me and fill me and show me new things and highlight to me what is the most important thing to do that day. Getting direction from God in the morning uh, absolutely makes my days more fruitful and productive. I, I used to try to go off my to-do list and not ask God and I've learned, God, show me what to do today because you have a better plan than I do. And it always is more um, blessed, more fruitful, and the best thing. It always is the best thing when I let God lead and guide my days. So I have been praying about this because um, coming out of addiction, I lived a life that was kind of upside down and backwards and I would be sleeping in um, really, really late. And so 
since I've been saved, so for over six and a half years now, I have been trying to become a morning person. And it, you know, got all the way back to, I used to get up like at 10-ish when I would sleep in. And then it was like, oh, I don't really want to sleep past nine ever. Um, if I sleep past nine, that feels funny. And then I had a really good habit pattern of getting up at eight every day. And if I got up after 8.30, I would feel like, oh, I'm sleeping in. I don't really like that feeling. Whereas, you know, in the past, in my old life, um, sleeping in, I would sleep all the time. So it, it's been something that God has pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. And I've tried for years, ever since I've become a Christian, I have prayed like God making me a morning person. I looked up verses on the morning over six years ago to help me wake up. It's like, what does the Bible say about waking up in the morning? So I was praying about this on Monday, um, the, the beginning of the week. And I was like, God, I really want to get up in the morning. This has been such a stronghold in my life. This has been something that I feel robbed by. I used to, when I would wake up late, feel so condemned, so guilty, and so robbed that I didn't get to have a morning. And so I was just praying, God, I really want this. This is always something I've wanted. And I was thinking um, 7 a.m. God, I want to get up by 7. And God said, why not 6? And I thought, well, six would be ideal. I would love to get up at six, but it didn't seem doable. It seemed like it would be um, impossible to do. And God said, I'm the God of miracles. I'm the God of possible. Why not six? And I said, okay, um, I would like to get up at six. And as I was praying, I was reading things about, so I'd like to read, when I'm trying to change an area or do something new in an area, I'd like to collect information. So I was like, what are the benefits of getting up early? And secular resources, not Christian resources, were saying uh, you have more peace, you have uh, more productivity, you have uh, better health and um, balance in life. Like there was all these benefits of getting up early in the morning. So it's by design that we get up early. Um, in the Bible, zero, the zero hour is 6 a.m. The third hour is 9 a.m. And the ninth hour is 3 p.m. So if zero, the zero hour of the day in the Bible is 6 a.m., then that's when I should be starting my day every day. So I was praying about it and asking God. And he said, um, you know, don't, I'm the God of miracles. Ask for six. And so I was looking up verses on the morning and as God told me kind of, you know, ask for 6 a.m., James 1, 5 through 6 came into my mind. Uh, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, but God said, insert the ability to wake up in the morning. If any of you lacks the ability to wake up early in the morning, let them ask God who gives generously without finding fault. Um, and I think it says, and it will be given to you. It says, if any of you lacks the ability to get up early, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Um, and God has been speaking about faith and answering prayers. So I, in that moment, I decided I'm not going to doubt. Okay, God, I want to get up at six. I am asking you for this supernatural ability. Um, and... There's several things that God spoke to me about getting up early, um, but I will, I'll read the verses first. So I'll read the verses that God spoke, that, that I looked up. So I looked up the benefits of getting up early, and then I looked up again, because I did, I did this six years ago, over six years ago, looked up verses on the morning. So I looked them up again, and I wrote down my favorites, and these are some of my favorites about getting up in the morning. Psalm 90, verse 14. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. That sounds great. Sing for joy in the morning. Your love, unfailing love, satisfying us in the morning. Uh, Psalm 59 verse 16. But I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. For you have been to me and are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble and in the day of my distress. Um, that I merged the NIV and the ESV because I liked how it said both of the different things. But 
you know, talking about God being my fortress and my refuge and, and singing of his strength. I will sing of your steadfast love in the morning. Um, sing aloud. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. That sounds like someone who's in the morning filled with life, filled with joy. You know, when people sing, they're happy. They're um, expressing and expressive. When I feel tired, I don't really feel like singing. So singing in, aloud in the morning. Uh, Isaiah 50 verse 4. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. That is what I want. It's like, God, please instruct me in the morning. I want to be awake in you. I want to hear from you. I want revelation from you. I want to encounter you in the morning. Um, and all of this kind of originated out of a prayer I had earlier before this. I was praying, God, I feel like I don't have enough time with you. And intimacy is, is crowded. Life is getting so crowded. How do I have intimacy with you um, more? And, and then the thought is, we don't even have kids yet. How am I going to have intimacy with you when life gets even more crowded? When it gets, when time becomes even less something that I have and, and more crowded and more filled, how am I going to have intimacy with you? And so all of this is part of, I think, preparation for the future because I need time with the Lord in the morning. I need it. It's it's something that I think, God, how am I going to survive without that? If there's a little human here that needs my attention, how am I going to be filled with strength and grace and able uh, to instruct them well if I am not feeling filled by you, if I'm feeling like I don't have time with you? So even all of this um, ties into God putting my life in his perfect order and his perfect structure. So um, he wakens me morning my, by morning like one being instructed. It's like, yes, God, please, that is what I want. Please give that to me. Uh, Psalm 88, 13. But I, O Lord, cry to you in the morning. My prayer comes before you. So that that's someone who cries to the Lord in the morning. Someone who's praying in the morning. Getting up and praying. I'm desiring to get up to be with the Lord. I'm not desiring to get up and, and have, you know go work out and go to my job and go do a bunch of things in the world. I'm desiring to get up to be with the Lord. That's always what I want so that I can accomplish everything that he has for me to accomplish in this life. Um, so my prayer comes to you in the morning as someone who's praying. Psalm 119, 147, I rise before dawn and cry for help. I have put my hope in your word. That sounds like someone who is desperate for God. That sounds like someone who, who needs him before the sun comes up. I rise before dawn and I cry for help because I need you. So I thought, okay, God, I want to follow that example. Um, and then James 1.5, I already read that to you guys. So those were the verses that God was speaking to me. And then if you look up um, verses in the New Testament, that's just the Old Testament. If you look up verses in the New Testament, it talks many times about Jesus getting up while it's still dark and going to a solitary place to pray. I it, To follow his example, I want to be able to get up and, and pray. And so as I'm reading all these verses and as I'm getting it, and there's so many more, um, I'll post all these verses uh, in the description below, but there's so many more verses on the morning. And as I was reading all of this and, and saying, God, you know, you say it's possible. You say it'll be given to me. I'm asking you for it. God spoke to me several things that practically... Um, I need to do. The first one was uh, reach out for prayer. I have a group of women who um, I am accountable to and who support me and I support them. And so I thought, okay, God, this is something that's going to be supernatural. If this is going to happen, it absolutely is not going to be my own strength because I have tried to do this for more than six years and it is like I'm getting nowhere. I cannot. I I can't do it. So I, I I reached out for prayer and in asking for prayer I said pray that regardless of how much sleep I get the night before, regardless if I get 8 hours that I would wake up in the morning at, at in the 6 o'clock hour, the desire is 6 a.m. 
and I would be able um, to not be tired. I, tiredness wouldn't be something that I experienced. So God told me, um, also going back, God was speaking to me two weeks ago about what my source of energy was. I was, I don't know why, obviously for this, but God was saying, what's your source of energy? Am I really your source of energy? Like you don't totally understand where energy comes from because we think energy comes from food and sleep. Um, and if we exercise regularly, we'll have more energy. And God was showing me there's, you know, Jesus said, I, I have food that you know not of talking about doing the will of his father. When he was by the woman at the well in John four, he says, I have food that you know not of because he hadn't eaten all day. And they, you know, said, aren't you hungry? And he says, I have food that you know not of. So does God really sustain me? You know, Old Testament, does, man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Um, and Jesus said that. So, in, in all of that, realizing sleep doesn't sustain me. God said, sleep does not sustain you. Sleep is not your source of energy or strength. So I said, okay, pray that I will be able to wake up without um, getting a full eight hours of sleep. So that was the first lie to go. Don't believe that you need eight hours. God is my source of energy and strength. I'm gonna rely on him. The next thing was to cut coffee down. Um, God has cut caffeine. I like coffee, so I'll drink decaf coffee uh, mixed with caffeinated coffee. And God's decreased my increments of coffee. Um, and now I'm down to, you know, the caffeine equivalent to one cup a day uh, mixed with decaf. And so uh, God said, if you drink a lot of coffee or caffeine, you'll have a crash. So um, don't don't drink as much caffeine. Um, so that had to go. The next thing was to not fear tiredness. I um, believe that tiredness has been a difficulty in my life, a strategy in my life. I used to struggle with depression. When you have depression, you're tired. I, coming out of addiction, always tired. And I could not stand being tired or weak or fatigued. So I would sleep. It's like, I can't stand this feeling. I don't like being tired. I, I want to be awake and alert. And God told me, don't fear tiredness. You push tiredness off of you, reject tiredness. I'm your source of strength. So all of those things. Um, oh, and the uh, last thing, this is the biggest thing. Make the choice. God said, make the choice. You can do this. Make the choice, get up in the morning. Um, you make choices all day long about all sorts of different things. God said, just make the choice and I will be there. I will back you. I will help you and enable you, but you make the choice. So I decided uh, to do all these things. Um, I just want to make sure that I got everything on my list and I did. So I want, so, um, so I made the choice to do all these things. Once I did all of these things, uh, God has been helping me wake up early, no problem in the morning, and I'm having very fruitful days. It's only day four, but I have gotten up every single day uh, in the six o'clock hour, uh, except for this morning. My body was feeling a little weak, uh, and so I felt like God said it's okay to, to take an extra hour, so I got up at like 7.20. But still, that is earlier than my, my 8 a.m. or my 8.10 that I was at. So I feel like I am more productive. I feel like I have more time to have intimacy with Jesus. I feel like I'm more filled. So um, if any of you struggle with uh, having getting up early in the morning and you struggle in this area, um, know that I did too, and God can actually move this out of the way. He can move this difficulty out of the way, and he can help you, and he can bless you, and um, he can fill you, and your prayer time in the morning is vital, and it is important, and it does um, matter to God, and he wants to give you this gift. So these are all the things that God is teaching me this week. I pray uh, that they bless you and encourage you and fill you, and I pray that you all have a blessed and a beautiful day a day filled with God's beauty. Bye!